Many people now understand that what HR calls best practices may not be right for your company, but when it comes to HR technology, you still want to know what other companies are doing, right? I do. Our guest today knows that better than anyone. Welcome to Firing Line. I'm Bill Kudik. As VP of Research and Analytics for Sierra Cedar, Stacy Harris has taken over the definitive 20-year-old HR system survey, which was started by Lexi Martin. But now she's taking it in new directions, all useful to you. Hello, Stacy. glad you could be here. Hi, Bill, glad to join, yep. Let's start off with talking about the mid-market, which most people peg at 5,000 employees or below. Seems to me that it's really hot. Do you have, have any numbers for us or insights about what's going on there? Yeah, it's definitely huge. I mean, this is a space where we're seeing on, from the HR technology side that organizations are um, not only have open opportunity to adopt more HR technology, but they're also seeing an increase in their overall technology budgets for HR. And so this is a space that's hot both from the vendor's perspective and from the buyer's perspective. And I understand that some of these people don't have nothing yet. There's a few, yeah. So there's about 10% of organizations up to about 5,000 employees really don't even have a payroll system, right? They might be outsourcing some of it, but they don't have a technology that they see as part of their HR environment, right? right. Um, but we are seeing that generally most organizations have in place some sort of core HR or payroll solution, but there's still an opportunity in many cases to not have to replace something, but to do what we call a greenfield when sales. Right, which yeah. I find staggering. Yeah. Um, early adopters of technology, do they really get a benefit and does that depend on their size and complexity? Yeah, it's always the biggest question, right? Is right. there some value in adding all this technology? Um, our data definitely is showing that those organizations who invest in HR technology when they're in the mid-market and small side of the businesses are seeing not only better business outcomes, that means increased customer satisfaction, increased innovation capabilities, increased market share, um, but we're also seeing those organizations see a considerably higher rating in their sort of um, uh, being set up as a organization that is a strategic HR function. So, ah, as opposed to administrative. As a, exactly, a compliance focused. And right. so those organizations are four times more likely to be seen as a strategic HR function compared to the compliance driven HR function. And to me, that's the biggest thing I think that makes a change for organizations. Because once you're no longer seen as a compliance function, but as a strategic function, you remove some of the administrative work, you make sure that you have um, automated systems that uh, provide transparency to your employees and to your managers managers, then HR can step up and start to help the organization guide their direction and set the tone for what their employees are going to be doing within the organization. And are large size companies such early adopters that if and everyone has to get on right away or they're behind the eight ball? Yeah, that's an interesting thing. What we see is that there's sort of a, a, an inverse um, value proposition, right? So it used to be that just getting any kind of HR technology over time would increase your overall value and, and overall um, what we'd say business outcomes within organizations. What we're seeing now is that organizations over 5,000 employees who don't have the sort of what we'd consider basic 16 or 17 HR solutions that generally are put in place for most organizations, they actually are not just not just not creating value, right? right. They're actually seeing um, more cost per employee in their overall administrative cost. Uh, they're seeing less innovation in those organizations, and we're also seeing that those organizations are having a uh, more difficult opportunity dealing with the, um, uh, the ability to increase value in their company, which means market share or, or revenue per employee, those type of things. Makes so, perfect sense, yeah. and probably have a higher headcount in HR as yes, well. Yes, definitely, yeah. Finally, cybersecurity separate topic. You heard Josh Greenbaum talk about how uh, for a corporate employee clicking on one attachment to one phishing email can break open the entire company to hackers. I always thought it was super powered systems on the hackers part, but it's all that simple. Now we have BYOD, bring your own devices, including not just your own smartphones at work, but your own laptops, your own tablets. Is HR dealing with the new risks from this? and how widely adopted is this? Because I remember five years ago, people were just screaming about it. Yeah, no, this is huge. We're talking 65 to 75% of North America-based organizations have a bring your own device wow. policy right now, yes. Um, and that's growing outside the US as well. That's in the more of the 40 to 50% range. But this is a space where HR really is at the center of the issue, right? Because not only is it about securing the data and making sure that it's connecting appropriately with your interfaces, but it's also um, focused on what happens if the employee leaves, what happens if the employee loses their system, 
who really takes ownership of that? Generally, it's HR. Um, so we're seeing a lot of conversation around things like um, automated data management systems within employees' phones. Are they going to use swipe technology to get rid of data if someone loses their phone or leaves an organization? It's all HR issues. Um, you could be really IT and policy driven about it, but what we really know is that HR's focus has to be, if they're going to be strategic, um, focused on ensuring that organizations manage the data while still allowing employees to do their job well. So. Isn't it amazing how, how HR continues to get more and more responsibility yes. in the corporation? <laughs> Every, it always expands, yes, yes. Ne it never, it's they, all never, they never give up anything, and they just yeah. have more things added. Yeah. Well, Stacy, I didn't lie when I said that you were on top of this stuff. Thank you so much for, your, for this view, and including statistics, some of which I found amazing. So thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. As always, it's a pleasure. Mine too. Don't miss next month's episode of Firing Line. Just click on the red subscribe box at the end. You'll get just one email notice, promise just one, when the next program has posted. Or write your comments on our YouTube page. Go to our Facebook page. Or send us an old-fashioned email to bill at cutic.com. We want to know what you're thinking. I'm Bill Kudek. Thank you for watching.